Hi. Hi. Um, uh, today, I'll read from the end time. March, April. March through April, 2016. I think I'm going to read the editorial by Urban Baxter. This generation shall not pass. And Jesus prophesied about a certain generation that would not pass away until seeing his second coming and the fulfillment of all the prophecies of the end time. The prophecy is recorded in Matthew 24, 32-34, which says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. There have been many opinions about the generation to which Jesus was referring. One popular theory thought that Jesus was referring to the generation that saw the rebirth of Israel in 1948. Some proponents of this view said a generation was 40 years and therefore Jesus had to return by 1988. However, 1988 came and went and it didn't happen. Some of these people have now changed their minds. They now contend that the generation is 70 years instead of 40. So now they are saying Jesus must be here by 2018. However, those who know the scriptures know there is at least another seven years until the second coming. Consequently, it's not going to happen by 2018. What did Jesus really say? He said, when you see these things, then know. To what things was Jesus referring and what can we we then know. Before saying these words, Jesus had spent nearly the entire chapter of Matthew 24 replying to two questions asked by his disciples. They asked in verse 3, Tell us when shall these things be, and well sh what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the age? Jesus proceeded to give many signs that would precede his second coming and the end of the church age. Many of the signs Jesus listed were general signs such as there will be wars and rumors of wars, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in different places. But haven't there always been wars and rumors of wars? Haven't there always been earthquakes and pestilences? Then these are general signs that we are that we really cannot say would identify the generation that shall not pass. Did Jesus give anything specific that would be a one time occurrence from which we can know we are the generation that will see all things fulfilled? He did. He actually foretold two specific things that would only happen one time. One, the abomination of desolation. In verse 15, Jesus said, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, let him understand. The abomination of desolation is when the Antichrist will stand on the temple mount claiming to be God. This will take place three and a half years before the second coming. The abomination of desolation is described in more detail in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3-4, which says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, the Antichrist, will be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, 
or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth on the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Two, Jews will be forced to flee from Judea. Jesus went on to say in verse 16 in Matthew 24, that Jews living in Judea, the West Bank, would have to run for their lives when they see the abomination of desolation. He also said that the abomination of desolation would mark the beginning of the final three and a half years called the Great Tribulation. When we see that, Jesus prophesied two events, the abomination of desolation and the fleeing of the Jews from Judea. Is the stage presently being set for these two events? The prophecies tell us that the peace agreement between Israel and the Palestinians will start a final seven-year period, which will end with the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus. This agreement will place the Temple Mount under a sharing agreement arrangement so both Muslims and Jews can worship there. Their sharing arrangement will be supervised by the international community, which will probably be the United Nations. Once the Antichrist becomes recognized as the leader of the international community, he will be in charge of overseeing the Temple Mount. When the Jewish Temple is built, animal sacrifices will be resumed in the Temple. This will be strongly opposed by animal rights activists. The Antichrist will order the sacrifices stopped, claiming at that point that he is Messiah and God. This event is called the Abomination of Desolation. The stage is being set for the Abomination of Desolation at this present time. There has been discussion in the peace negotiations of the possibility of sharing the Temple Mount. There is a bill that has been introduced in the Jewish Neset to place the Temple Mount under a sharing agreement. When Ehud Barak and Yasser Arafat were negotiating in the year 2000 at Camp David, Barak actually suggested the UN could oversee the sharing of the Temple Mount. Additionally, Religious Jews have already gone to Israel's Supreme Court asking for permission to offer a Passover sacrifice on the Temple Mount. So far, the request has been denied. Jews in Judea must flee. Jordanian troops came across the Jordanian, the Jordan River in 1948, joining six other Arab nations in an attempt to destroy the nation of Israel at the time of its birth. When the ceasefire was declared in 1949, Jordan occupied Judea, Samaria, Samaria, sorry, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. During the next 19 years of the Jordanian control of Judea, all of the Jews were driven out. By 1967, there were no Jews living in Judea. When Jordan attacked Israel in the 1967 war, Israel counterattacked, driving Jordan out of Judea and establishing Israel's control over Judea, which is part of Israel's biblical promised land. Jews began to move into Judea, building homes and establishing settlements. Today, there are around 800,000 Jews living in the area. Most of the Judea Sam Samaria is going to be given to the Palestinians when the prophecy peace agreement is reached in the near future. Jews who live in the territory will be given a choice to be bought out or remain in their homes, living as a Jewish minority under the authority of the new Palestinian government. Many Jews will choose to stay in their homes thus setting the stage for the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy. Jesus said that the Jews living in Judea at the time of the abomination of desolation, which will occur halfway into the seven, final seven years, would have to flee for their lives or be slaughtered. Jesus said it would be 
great tribulations such as never has been before nor ever again shall be. So we can see that the stage is now being set for the fulfillment of Jews having to flee from Judea and the launching of the great tribulation. Are we the generation that shall not pass? It certainly looks like events are developing that will result in both the abomination of desolation and the fleeing of Jews from Judea. How quickly will these events come to pass? It appears these two prophecies will come to pass within the next five to seven years, but we cannot say with absolute certainty. Even if it took 10 years for this to unfold, it is obvious most of us will be part of the generation that will see the culmination of all things, including the Battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus to the earth. I firmly believe you and I are the generation of which Jesus spoke, which will see the culmination of all the end time prophecies. That's it. Thanks for watching.